Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today what I want to do is I want to show you another Amazon meter. This is the Amazon commercial line. We did this one not too long ago. It's a 2000 count. Really cool little meter. It's uh, tested by a third party lab. So it's got the agency testing uh, just like the flukes do. And, and not too long ago I did a, a review on the Fleur which competes with the higher end flukes, I think very well. Now, this guy, more along the lines of the fluke 179, okay? This is a 79, and the 179, well here, let me just show you. The 179 is gonna have some of the features of this guy, the 189. It's gonna have the hold min-max added, also the backlight added, so. I'll just leave that there. It's going to have these things added to this. This guy here is a 6,000 count like he is. Uh, it has third-party testing. It's actually tested by Intertech. So, you know, very, you know, dependable. You can count on the agency testing on this. 6,000 count, true RMS to 1 kilohertz. So... Very comparable to this 170. Well, this is a 79, but very comparable to the 179 that replaces this. It has those extra buttons, okay? That's a 300 r meter on sale. Well, 299, whatever. This guy here is under 100 bucks. Amazon commercial. So, pretty cool line. I was really. Uh, so, when I saw this meter, I was really amazed you know the cost un under 20 bucks and everything you got with that so i started looking at some of their other meters and i and i bought this guy thinking like this would be a really good one for anybody who is doing you know work out in the field and that that needs the category four rating that wants it tested by an independent laboratory so they know that it's safe but they don't want to spend 300 bucks. But they don't want to give up anything either. I have a feeling we're not going to have to worry about that. I got a feeling this meter is going to basically blow the pants off to 179. Okay. Let me. Open this guy up real quick. Wow. And you know what? What's really neat. Okay. We're going to bring the camera over just from there just so you can see the difference okay the comparison oh I guess you'll see whoa look at that well wow, that okay first of all I gotta say it comes with the case that's kind of amazing not super expensive case or anything it's kind of got a canvas feel to it on the output nice uh, nice soft inside to keep the display from getting scratched it's a little padded okay we got some leads got our Amazon battery of course 9 volt too, which uh, I think it's the same thing that the Fluke 179 takes, I believe. Uh, some of the meter, some of the Flukes take triple A's, some take 9 volts. Uh, and back in the day, I always preferred 9 volts for some reason. I, I don't know if I really care anymore, but uh, anyway, the back stand looks very good, very similar to the Fluke. Yeah. Nice meter. Okay. You know what? Let's bring the camera over. So just to, I mean, see from there, the this guy's narrower for sure. Uh, both feel really good. This guy has kind of the smoother, slicker, rubber, rubberized finish. All rubber in the back except for the plastic stand and uh, plastic on the front seems like the same kind of setup here kind of a hard face on the front plastic stand on the back and otherwise oh well you know what one thing I'm not sure about this guy does not have the uh, the lead holders I, I don't know if the 179 does or not I guess I never really thought about that but this guy does uh, this guy does have the little clip where you can clip this on to something, this little plastic guy that comes down. Uh, this guy has a little loop thing here where you can put, you know, one of those magnetic uh, hanger things 
but yeah pretty nice pretty nice body so far you're gonna get a close-up view of this pretty soon so let's bring the camera over and get into it and we'll check this guy out too bad I can't show the display there <laughs> display does look taller than the 179 hopefully the digits are nice and big uh, kind of like on this guy this guy really utilized the the display really well big digits all right let's bring the camera over check it out all right so first just want to show you the box that came in 6,000 counts IP67 to RMS all right and then here's the ETL mark that's the agency testing all right so you get the manual you get these uh, test leads and your 9 volt battery from Amazon and these little guys which are kind of interesting I think here I'm just gonna rip this open these little guys are meant to protect the guys you're not using commonly night that is nice I don't generally see those come with meters in fact I think this is the first time I have so I, I like that we'll just set those aside so until we get done with it but that, yeah that's a nice little that is a nice little addition uh, so if you are working out in the field and that it helps keep your ports clean okay so let's check out the meter leads now I can tell you they feel kind of soft and everything they're I'm sure they're PVC if they, they don't feel like silicone uh, they seem like about standard meter length meter lead length you know and strain relief looks nice on this end nice nice plugs you know nice grippy plugs probes nice standard length they have the cat 3 cat 4 protective caps that fit snug but yet come up whoa and I can tell you those already look sharp so those things are sharp but okay and these are their TO99-1 okay and let's see what else we see on this well actually on the other side yeah 10 amp UL listed so UL's been has tested these to 10 amps do we see any other markings huh I don't see any markings I do see some marking on the black lead oh that's interesting oh there it is it's probably easier to see on the black one yeah I'm not sure if you can read that but it's 2000 volt 18 gauge ADC all right, I think the next thing to do is put the battery in it. And it looks like a single screw there to remove. Okay, let's see if that's it. By the way, if you can see in there, it tells you the fuse types and the battery. And here's the uh, independent laboratory file number. So you can look that up to so you're sure that it conforms to the standard there that they test to that's the typical multimeter standard okay that felt like it was capped it for a minute but it's just because it was where is it maybe it is captive yeah yeah I don't see the captive screws very often yep that's captive so that's nice it holds the screw in place and it has this little lock right here that when you put it in here it just latches down okay so that's a nice feature now if you look inside here it's just a it's got a a ridge around this edge so this drops into the meter that much it's got a nice little you know it's I mean it's super rigid and all these features I think just gives it a lot of strength on both ends you can see it sits down here it's got a metal retaining ring holding that screw and then up here you can see the big old fuses I was trying to rotate that fuse and by the way the fuse 
this these ceramic fuses they look like they're high rupture capacity type fuses you can tell there let's try to pop one of those out of there so you can see a little circuit board down in there and there's a little slot cut out in the board so there's no voltage tracking I, I assume from one terminal to the other we've got our UL listing 1000 volt 10 amp so good quality fuse and I've seen these fuses before I've actually bought some of these before to replace in meters same thing each battery is separated in its own compartment UL listing 1000 volt 800 milliamp and the battery is it in its own compartment it's got a little rubber pad here on the side to keep the battery from rattling around inside there's a can here Okay. so very nice construction another thing to point out is how it has that little finger thing where you reach down there and grab it so that's very nice now this guy has these little features built into it that kind of clip clip down into the rubberized part of the stand I suppose it just barely clips in though and these things are rigid enough to hold leads you know with some strength but yet strong you know I mean they're strong enough to hold it but flexible enough to move out so that way you can use it as a single hand and and go probe something while you use your other hand with the other probe that way you can hold the meter and a probe in one hand like that all right so now just comparing the displays let me turn this guy back on he fell asleep this guy is has a lot higher count these guys are 6,000 count meters I like the large digits on this this guy still has that little protective coating which eh, heck I'll take it off okay there we go okay there's the backlight on that one and like I say this one doesn't have the backlight it the 179 does so it'll be more like this and I don't know if it has like the fluke has a two-step thing but he, but even you know I'll tell you what if we didn't love flukes I think we'd beat them up for their displays because that backlight is not so hot it's really hot on this side it's just not very even I mean compared to lower cost meter I think it's turning off quick because I'm down one cell up here but that doesn't really change the brightness yeah, you guys can tell, right? Yeah, this display is definitely nicer, I think. Okay, another thing this uh, Amazon has is this VFD. See the VFD right here? So when you hit mode, oh, do you hold mode down? Okay, you hold it down, it goes in VFD mode. And that's that variable frequency drive. This is where a filter low pass filter is going to come into play and filter out the high frequency noise so you get a good reading so, yeah it says and that was kind of cool hey okay let's go ahead and stick some meter leads in here now that we got the batteries in I'm kind of curious I want to put this in the common right black and common I'm going to put this in the current probe I just want to see doesn't seem to complain yeah that's interesting there's no you know it doesn't have the complaint system like uh, the fluke might have let's see wow that's interesting these guys uh, this plastic port it will not take these probes Jeez, these guys have these ridges on them that don't allow it to go down inside this fluke. Wow, that's interesting. Huh, you know what? I think what they're doing is because this guy is the IP67, 
these little soft rings right here seal against the sides here and keep moisture from going in. You know what? That's probably another reason why they provided these. So it's waterproof. That's how it's able to be submerged is because of these special uh, ridges on here. Wow. Okay, so that's one thing to be cautious of is if you change the probes uh, you want to make sure you get some to keep that water tight feature. Okay, I'm going to take these little caps off. This is for Cat 3, Cat 4, so you want to keep those if you're using it in those environments. These are Cat 2, like for the bench. Okay, let's go to, uh, let's just start off with continuity. How about that? And there's diode, and there's continuity buzzer. What do you think of the sound of that? I mean, it's a nice latching buzzer. Okay, so I'm going to put some fluke leads into this fluke. Now, by the way, the fluke leads do work in these. It just does, it's not going to give you that water, you know, proof kind of thing, that submersible IP67 rating. Okay, so what I want to do is put the sort in continuity. And, wow, listen to that high pitch sound. Okay, versus uh, wow, I never really realized it, but that fluke is a really high pitched sound. I don't know if I like that high pitched sound personally. Okay, okay, and this and this uh, one eighty nine. That's kind, of, that's kind of an interesting sound too, right? Okay, so I just wanted to show you something that I think is kind of interesting. Um, so we're set at 31 ohms right now. Let's see, I'll go to 49 ohms. See how it takes a little while for it to get that continuity? Drop down to 39. It's a little bit faster. Still a little faster. And then under 20 ohms, it's faster. I noticed that it was actually a feature on another meter, the FLIR meter, which if you're over one range, it was a little slower beep. And if you're under a range, you get a faster beep. So it kind of gives you, kind of gives you an idea how good your continuity really is. I've never noticed that before. I want to try that with the fluke. Okay. Pretty darn fast. Okay, 29 ohms is over the range on that fluke. You know, that uh, might be settable, so it might be... Yeah, you notice that? A little chirp, chirp, chirp. So it's kind of doing a similar kind of thing. Yeah, so, huh, interesting. All right, let's do some in-circuit diode testing. So let's go to diode mode. There we go, we got our diode. I think I'm charging up a capacitor. Let's flip the leads. Yep, there we go. And if I go to the other diode, yep, that looks good. Look, I can light up the red LED. 1.736 volts. Okay, so in circuit diode testing looks good. Let's try some more diodes. Let's try these LEDs. Nope. 
Okay, 2.588. This is the one that has multiple colors, but we got to get the right. There we go. There's red, 1.77, 2.25, and blue's 2.5. Let's hit these. That looks like a dim yellow, 1.7. There's 1.6. That's a dim green. I think these lights are just not very bright. They're always testing that way. That looks good too. Alrighty. Diode testing is nice. Hey, you know what? Just for fun, let's go to the diode tester on this guy. Okay, so we're in diode mode. That's interesting. It's showing 2.1 volts as an open circuit voltage. I just want to test the voltage output of this guy. 2.2. Wow, I wonder if that's what it's trying to tell you. Okay, let's go to diode mode over here. And then we'll take and yeah, we'll take this meter since I got probes in it. And let's go test see what the open circuit voltage is here. 3.28. So, that's pretty good. That's what the spec showed, I think, 3.2 or 3.5, I kind of forget right now, but yeah, that looks good. Okay guys, I got my leads for my power supply coming from here and the red one goes into the milliamp, microamp setting of the Amazon and then out the common into the milliamp of the fluke and out the common back to the power supply. So these guys are just in series. And right now we're, I've got the power supply set and I'm right around zero amps and Right around there, my power supply is really squirrely, and so it'll kind of bounce around, and you can kind of watch it bounce. One thing I want to show you is right now, we're just having to set up minus 8 point, I'm not sure which one to believe, but here, let's go to micro, okay, 8.2, 8 8.3, okay, let's go to microamps on this one, and it goes to AC, so I have to go to DC. Now, the burden voltage for microamps versus milliamps is different. When we go to milliamps, the current, okay, the current goes up, but when I go to microamps, I get a bigger resistor inside here to measure the current, get better accuracy. So when I go down, see this one goes to five. Now I have to switch this guy every time I do. It defaults to AC, I have to go to DC. But look at that. So uh, this is five milliamps, and this is 5,000 microamps. So we get those all those three places on this one because of the they're both 6000 count but I can go to microamp so I get a better resolution so I am I tend to believe you know this digit that last digit on either meter is always a little bit you know that's where the resolution falls off but now my power supply it'll fluctuate uh, down at this low current level so you can kind of see it moving around now let me see if I can just bring it up a little bit. It's negative. It'll it'll drop in value. It'll go you know towards zero, and then plus. So you're just kind of getting to see how it bounces. Okay, now this guy's. They change ranges, right? So now look, this guy, I get three digits, and this guy, I only get the two digits here. So. The resolution with microamp setting is better at these low currents. Okay, now we're at 1.4 milliamps, and this is 1300, you know, this is microamp still, so, so it's interesting, right? Okay, now I'll go to milliamps just so you can see them in the same, okay, 1076, 1078, they're, they're, Current's going up and down, but they're pretty close. Okay, 62 mi milliamps. This guy's only good for 40 milliamps, so we have to go to the 10 amp range. This guy's good for 800 milliamps. So, yeah, you get a little better resolution, right? Okay, let's just jump over to voltage real quick. Okay, guys, so now we're in the volt range, and... I'm going to go ahead and adjust the voltage up. Okay. I'm kind of moving it 
not too slow so you can kind of see how fast they move together how fast they track they they look pretty darn close I think this one looks like a 4,000 count I thought it was 6,000 count but it already switched over so I might might have been wrong on this guy maybe the new one went to 6,000 count the 179 yeah, see where it's still, it hasn't switched over. It lets you go a little bit above. Sometimes some meters do. I like to kind of look at that and see where it does. Well, it went over one. Okay, so 6.2. So I kind of like that when they go over. Some, you know, and then you have to drop below 6 for a little bit before it'll go back to giving you an extra digit over here. Yeah, about 5.9. Yeah, uh, yeah, I like the way that works. That's nice. So, yeah, sorry guys. I thought that was a 6,000 count meter. I think the newer one, I think that must have been another upgrade. So, like I say, it gets the hold button and the min-max. Hey, my, uh, one thing I can point out, though, is this one here has a relative, and so does this. The uh, newer 79.3, I do not think it has relative, because it has range, the yellow, you know function button min max and hold so this one has hold but it also has relative and it has min max and then a separate button for the hertz all right guys so now what we're doing is we're reading volts off the function generator see i have my function generator coming into this lead right here and then these two guys are still daisy chained together what i want to do is i want to show you the bandwidth they're good up to one kilohertz here, let's go to Hertz. See, there's 1K. Then we got to switch this guy over that way. So yeah, they're they're green pretty close, right? But here, let's go to 2K. Okay. But then we go back to volts. This guy's doing a good job. They're rated at 1K. Let's turn off the Hertz. Okay, that's duty cycle. Yeah, got duty cycle too. Do we have duty cycle on this guy? Uh, maybe the new one does. Uh, but anyway, okay, so let's go to volts. Okay, but see how this dropped off just, uh, it's just barely starting to drop off because, I mean, when they said one kilohertz, they weren't kidding. We're at two kilohertz and it's still not bad. So I'd say two kilohertz okay, but look at three kilohertz. It's it's really right around 3K, it's dropping off to 0.7. And this guy's just barely starting to drop off. Four, five six okay here there's seven k this this set fluke 79 is holding in there i'm pretty impressed okay i'm 14k 15 okay i jumped up to 20k you know what i wonder if i got the spec wrong on this i thought it was only up one kilohertz yeah i'm kind of wondering that that looked like it was good to 20k okay now i'm going to go back to square wave now okay we'll go back down to 1k there's 1K. So this guy with the square wave, it's starting to roll off because the square wave has a lot of higher frequency harmonics. So 1K square wave, usually a lot of multimeters will have a lower frequency on square wave versus sine. Just want to point that out. And we can see when we go to 2K, it's dropping off pretty fast. 3K. So a little bit worse than than uh, the sine wave. Okay, now let's go to VFD function. I'll push this down and hold it. And look at that. So that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to filter out that high frequency noise. So, And it does it at 1K. So we're right at 1K and it's filtering all that square wave stuff out. So it, this might actually be down closer to 800 hertz where it filters. I don't think it was in the spec, I was just assuming. So, yeah, this guy, he's not fooling around when he goes to that VFD mode. And look at that, pops right back up to one volt. And that's at two kilohertz. And that's one kilohertz. So yeah, that VFD, man. Yeah, they're not fooling around. All right, so consulting the manual. It says 50 volts to 700 volts for VFD function. So, 
Yeah, that's why I think it was filtering so harsh at the one volt. <laughs> it's expecting, you know, where you're working on line voltages for motors and so on. Okay, we brought the big capacitor bank back. Now, there's two banks. There's uh, Each one of these are 10,000 microfarads. And uh, you can see 10,000 microfarads there. They're nice caps. There's 40 and 40. But the meters usually read around 27 because... They are, there's these uh, bleed, bleed resistors, which I think throws off the meters. So let's see, minus on this side, on the outside. Let's go to capacitance. And, okay, nanofarads. Let's go ahead and, yep, that's about what all the meters read is 26.7. So, you know, I don't know if I showed the bag very well, but, there are no pockets inside. That's kind of a shame. It'd be nice to have pockets for those hand tools or test leads or whatever, like I said. But in a case like that, you'd want to put the meter in front and put the leads behind the meter. But still, pretty nice to give you a bag with it, right? I mean, this is all under 100 bucks. I think Amazon's price on this is $90. And by the way, this goes up to 100 millifarads, or 99.99. .99. So this... This guy has quite the capacitance range on it, this, uh, this little Amazon. Okay, so you can use this Max Min if you have a fluctuating AC voltage and pseudo capture, like say the Max in this case is 3.17, 0.317. Minimum is 0.136. And then Max Minus Min, the difference between Max and Min was 0.181. So that's kind of a cool feature. Or you might have a fluctuating DC voltage. So you can push this. And wait a moment. Okay, it looks like 2.995 is the max. And about 2 volts is min. And about 1 volt between them. And so to get this, I have a 1 volt peak to peak with 2.5 volts DC. So it's going from so it goes a half a volt above and then a half a volt below so we end up with two volts at min and there's there's a one volt peak to peak and it goes to three so it's pretty cool all right guys like i say this is a 79 three uh the 179 is one of the two extra buttons plus the backlight display okay so to have a backlight display like this, and I'll have these two buttons, all right? So I've taken the four screws out of the back, which let me show you, two here. We're gonna look at the Fluke 2 since we're comparing it to it. And there's two here, okay? Then it separates and it kind of clips into the end and it pops loose. So here's a little spongy thing. It's pretty flat now, but that's to hold the battery from flopping around so it does take the 9 volt battery okay and from here you can see the two uh, large fuses and they have their own compartment so we have nice separation and they put the bosses right in the middle which actually adds some strength to the terminal so that's nice and then uh, we have the kind of nice dial here that you don't have to worry about that wearing out too much and then look at this this is interesting so the new one they put the two buttons here. It's almost like they planned it because look at that. You know, it was designed ahead of time to take four of these buttons. These little carbon guys that go down here and touch in here. Okay, so I was trying to... It felt like it was going to pull out, but guess what? There's a pesky little screw right there that you have to take out. That's interesting. They hit one screw. Okay, we have the nice shield. There's a little buzzer. And it's interesting the shield goes all the way down underneath the battery. That, I don't know. That, yeah, I'm not sure about that. But this right here is where it screws into the ground plane or the part they're trying to ground to the shield. And there's not a whole lot going on here. There's some tandem capacitors up here. A couple more here. And there's another tandem capacitor. Okay, I'm going to have to take these screws out so I can separate this so we can see underneath that. Okay, so I took these four screws out here. 
and on the one thing I noticed there's this array of hole, holes in the PCB and there's some slots here there's a slot there where the plastic comes through so one thing about this plastic is it separates things it's used for isolation and to hold the display so there's our display contacts all right and you see this compartment here, how it came down here and separated this side from that side. There's our current shunt. And it fits up inside here. And then there's this little wall right here that separates that from the, the fuse here. And also, also these walls you are used as bumpers in case the, the meter's dropped so the fuse doesn't slide out. Same here. Otherwise, I mean, here it can actually slide down and hit that, but it can't go any further than that. Wow, it can go all that far, though. It's almost out of the clip. Here's the rectifier to fire off the current shunt. And there's probably some protection uh, diodes in here. Oh, there's probably a high voltage resistor here. There's actually some trim pots. I mean, this is an older meter. There's another tantalum capacitor. That looks like an optocoupler. And then our chip underneath this shield. And then there's a plastic shield here holding this resistor. You know, that, that's a nice touch. Okay, now we have our three MOVs. And our large uh, resistor here with the PTC. This one here doesn't have the epoxy. It's, it's, it's just kind of out there. And, you know, one advantage of that is that it heats up faster. Because it doesn't have to heat up epoxy. But the other thing is it's not protected by the epoxy. And it's right up next to our resistor. Maybe it's meant to be. I don't know. That doesn't seem like it should be. All right. So there's our construction. I'm going to clean this out and put it back together. Okay, guys. To get this off, I had to take the battery compartment door off because there's these two screws sitting down in here that were partially protected by the cover. And then there's two here and two here. And... All right, so if you look at these screws, they have these little collars here, these bushings, and there's a rubber washer on the other side of it. Yeah, you see the rubber washer and the bushing? These uh, took a little more effort to take out, actually. So it took me a little while to take this apart. All right, so let's open it up. It's having me tug a little bit. Oh, maybe I need to remove the battery. Sorry. Hold on a sec. Okay. Feels like it's grabbing on something. Oh, I see. Wow. There's a rubber grommet here holding on this wire to keep this, this seal to the battery compartment. Yeah, that took a little tugging. All right, so you can see the fuses, they go up inside these cavities. So they've got this, like, you can see all the dimensions to this plastic here. Look at the large bosses for those, for those uh, bosses from the screws to go up into to, to seal off. Okay, now, if you look at this, you can see how these terminals are bolted down and then there's these little things that come off to solder to this board that sits up here I'm gonna remove both fuses ah yeah look at this board that's interesting that holds the fuses onto these terminals wow that is kind of crazy and look the blue MOVs have the heat shrink held on a big PTC here and here's our current shunt there's a MELF resistor down in here. And I'm going to bring this up closer so you can see it. But check out this resistor. It has a, it looks like a, a heat shrink over the top of it. And look at the size of these MELF parts. There's a crystal oscillator. There's a couple of plastic features here from the case that come up to hold the board secure in place. And then it looks like that's part of the the knob where it protrudes through the board right there. There's another UL mark on the board right there.
All right, from that angle, you can see the PTC, the PTC and the MOVs. And you can see the UL marking on the boards. Okay, underneath. underneath, you see there's a cable come from this terminal. The route's up, and it's got some heat shrink over the cable, so, so there's lots of protection on that cable. And I can see it comes all the way up underneath here. And I can see some large mouth parts down there, too. There you go. I think you can see the large mouth parts underneath the board. Yeah, I hope you understand why I'm not going to disassemble this because it, this is soldered to these terminals and I don't want to break the solder joints. And there's a lot of mounts. Like, wow, this is, this is kind of crazy. Now, here's another thing. As you see this ridge right here that fits into this case, and this ridge that fits in, they kind of sandwich together. But look at this large rubber surface on both sides. So when this sandwiches together, that's how they're sealing it. They're creating a nice seal there. Yeah, this looks like a very high quality product, guys. All right, okay, I heard you. I'm trying to do it. Now I've taken all the bolts off and the screws and these guys fit pretty tight. Ah, I got it. Yikes, I think I heard some stuff falling. Whew. All right, that's interesting. They've got nice, it looks like FR4 board, uh, some fiber board holding the buttons in place. And there's our rotary knob, which I don't wanna lose any of those little parts. But these guys are sealed, the pulse are sealed into the housing. So they're very strong, strongly held. And there's lots of bosses, wow. And wow, look at all that protection, guys. Was it worth it? So what do you think of that? Three MOVs and three PTCs here. This is all very clean. Lots of spacing between things. They're labeled very nicely. Then on this side, we have two more MOVs and another PTC. All right, so it looks like in all, we got five MOVs and four PTCs. It's a lot of protection. And look at those large MELF diodes. There's, there's an array of them down there. You see that wire with all the protection there? That is impressive. I think that was worth taking it off. All right, guys, you're going to have to give me some time to put this back together. <laughs> there were a lot of screws, and these things fit very snugly. Everything everything's had a very snug, tight fit. And I'm going to have to feed these wires through that rubber grommet. That rubber grommet's thick. Uh, and guys, by the way, if you see these big ridges and how well this is put together, it was very easy to get this battery out with just one screw, where the fluke... You have to actually uh, expose the meter. You have to get inside the meter to get the battery out, which I don't know if I'm a big fan of that part of it. I, I kind of liked taking off one screw and being able to get to the fuses and the battery. So, All right, guys, so what do you think? I think Amazon has done an awesome job. I'd say two thumbs up. Two. So, yeah, I like it. Good meter. Hey guys, subscribe if you haven't done so. Give the video a thumbs up if you can. And uh, if you liked it. And there we go. Hey, thanks for watching. And appreciate you supporting the channel. And we'll see you next time.